Hello Year 11, uh, this is a quick video to give you an overview for how to approach paper two question four for the English language exam. We hope you've watched our videos uh, on paper two question one to three so far. This is the next one in the series. So as we're looking through this a breakdown of each of the questions, you'll see this, this is the fourth question out of five. It is the last question in the reading section. And the main difference to paper one is that rather than in paper one it being worth 20 marks, it's now worth 16 marks. So rather than being a minute a mark, you've got a little bit more time there. The crucial thing about this question is that it is comparing viewpoints. Now, what a lot of students end up doing is they end up confusing question two and question four. Question two is simply a summary. Question four is the comparison of the viewpoints. Two is really a summary of what happens in the source relating to a specific topic. Whereas this one is really looking at what they think about the topic. So what you're having to do really is tell me what happens like you do in question two, but then you're crucially analyzing the language as well. So it's really a combination of question two and question three into this final one. This is arguably the most important question to make sure you have your timings correct because students often spend too long on the previous questions, not giving themselves enough time for this one. So what does a question actually look like? This is an example question. If you want to pause the video now, just to have a quick read of the question. And what we can see here are a couple of key features. It is talking about the different perspectives and feelings. So you are comparing what the authors think about something. So for this, you are analyzing language and you can also look at structure. So what does the author focus on to begin with? How does that shift throughout the source? And then the other crucial thing is this is the other question that you are focusing on the whole source again. So whereas questions one and three ask you to look at just certain lines, you need to look at the whole of both of the sources. A quick hot tip for you, before you read both sources through at the start of the exam, check what this question is first. So hopefully what you would have done is right at the very start of the exam, looked at this question so that when you're reading it, you can take some of those ideas into practice. But before we actually look at how to tackle the question, a couple of things we just need to make sure we've got very clear in our head. And the crucial difference we need to look at is the difference between fact and opinion, or these two keywords, subjective and objective. So of these two images, I want you to have a think, pause the video if you want, and tell me which one is subjective and which one is an objective image. So let's see if you're right. This one is subjective. It is based on personal feelings and bias existing in one's mind. As you can see, this person really likes cake. This person does not like cake. Therefore, it makes it subjective. Whereas in this one, they both agree on the same thing because there are four oranges or whatever fruit you want it is. It is factual and without bias. And what we need to think about in this question is we're looking really to see the subjective viewpoint. How often do they uh, show, does the writer show a subjective viewpoint as opposed to an objective viewpoint? And just to practice that on a couple of different examples, I want you please to look at the statements that we've got here, and I want you to label them as objective and subjective. I suggest you pause the video now so you can write out which ones are objective and which ones you think are subjective. So this is the order that I would say. I would say the ones on the left hand side are the objective and the ones on the right hand side are subjective. Remember, objective are things that you cannot argue with. Fire gives off heat and burns. A scientific fact, scientific facts all around here. Now, the only thing that you might be a little bit um, unsure about, two plus two is four, minus one, that's three. Absolutely objective, quick maths, potentially that skeptolyric is subjective. So I wouldn't mind if you've put split that up, put half it on there. But these, all of these ones are statements that people could disagree with. And they are the subjective ideas. And what we need to think about for this question, not only identifying the subjective ideas, but then picking out the words that show what is the subjective viewpoint and what does that imply? Looking for those adjectives. What is that implying they think of Thor in this uh, incident? What about the adjective boring here for the woods? What is that implying? What is their viewpoint? So now let's actually have a look at an example uh, question and an example extract. You'll rem remember for this paper, you will get two extracts, um, both nonfiction, written in different time periods on a similar theme. So the theme that we're going to look at for extracts is going to be gangs. 
Uh, gangs have been around for centuries, but obviously the way that they are viewed has very much differed over time. It's supposed to be your family, a visual display of brotherhood, looking out for each other. But ultimately, what we're going to see in the, these two extracts is that there are different viewpoints about gangs. So here is your question. Using both sources, compare how the writers convey their different feelings and perspectives of gangs. So we're looking for what are the different feelings and perspectives? And crucially, you need to try and find me the, uh, the methods or the subject terminology or the language techniques that show those ideas for that. So this is your first source taken from a newspaper in 1898. What I suggest you do, you pause the video now. And as you're going through this, I hope you've got a copy in front of you. If not, you can just make annotations of key quotations which answer these questions. What is the viewpoint on, ga on the life of gangs? And how do you know finding quotations to support your ideas? I would suggest you take about eight or so minutes to go through that for me. And then let's go on to source B. Exactly the same, but this one is written in 2017. So you're again looking for a different perspective to source A. So now that you've made your annotations on source A, which we will go through some examples of shortly, I want you to have a look at this source and find any similar similarities or differences. And in actual case, I'm gonna take that back. You should only really be looking for differences. Although you might find that there is a general sense of a similarity in terms of the overarching viewpoint about gangs not being pleasant, what are the subtle differences between them? Because that's what's going to help you get those high marks. What are the actual differences of viewpoints with that? I suggest, again, you take eight minutes or so to read the source and annotate language techniques and specific words which help to show the ideas in that. So let's have a look at source A then. I picked out a couple of examples, which I think help to show the viewpoint and specifically and crucially picking out the methods to be able to show that. And I like to go through it in uh, as we go through the text, because I think what really helps an examiner is if you can talk through the text in the order in which the events occur. So rather than starting with a quotation from the end of the source, you really want to start with a quotation towards the upper end, because that is establishing that viewpoint. And if you're using words like establishing in your answer, that's really helping to show that you're understanding the structure of how this uh, writer has put things together. So looking at that first line, for example, I picked out the word here, infest. And what I've said about this, the verb infest, because I picked out the method, the terminology, likens these people to rats, almost like they have overrun the city and are disgusting pests. So very clearly here, I've identified a quotation, I've identified a perspective, and I've linked it to the method there. A couple more examples that you might want to note down here, looking further down the text, the word pest and this example here. So this one reinforces the sense that gangs are not wanted. And that's really crucial. If we want to be moving into that band three and band four for this answer up to the top end, you need to be not only just analyzing the specific words and techniques, but trying to link it to another example. So through the words reinforce or contradict or juxtapose to. And then a final one that I picked up here. This is not an isolated case. I've stated that is a declarative. Now, a declarative um, is a phrase where you, um, the writer is telling you something. So therefore, it's showing a sense of confidence that they have, showing the sense of fear, potentially, showing that gangs are spreading and can be found anywhere. So again, I've identified what the perspective is and I've identified the method associated with that. So those are three examples I've taken from source A. I suggest if you pause the video now to add any more annotations in a similar way, or you can add mine yourself. So now let's look at source B. And if we're looking at source B, we're not just going to be annotating it in the same way, because what we need to make sure we do this time is we need to make sure we've got that element of comparison. So is it a, where is it different to what we said previously? This might have been slightly more tricky to find things to begin with, because ultimately in source A, there is a very strong sense, a permeating sense of violence and suffering as a result of gangs, which you can also see at the start of source A, source B. But really don't panic when you see that. If you see just similarities, don't analyze them. Don't analyze them because that won't score you marks, but you will find differences later on. 
So I found a couple of differences later on. And this is what something that I was drawn to. I was drawn. I was drawn. I was drawn. And that is an example. The repetition of the phrase suggests that the writer initially saw something positive in gang culture as they could offer him the father figure he never had, which is a crucial difference. So whereas source A, absolutely from the start, we see the idea of them being infested, that gangs are infesting everything. This one shows that actually there is something positive about it. I've stated the uh, I've given a comparison. I've stated what the perspective is, and I've given a method associated with it. And then another crucial example I've picked out with the word merges. Mer the verb merges suggests gang culture is insidious and its influences grows slowly over time. The word insidious, if you're not sure what that means, you might have seen the film or you might have heard of the film. Insidious is a word that means when something grows without really you noticing for a harmful effect. So in this case, it's almost the sense that gangs didn't just appear overnight and start causing havoc, as you see in source A. In source B, there's more of a sense that actually their influence grows slowly over time, which obviously has a negative effect. So that is the difference. So again, in the examples I found, I've made sure to make the comparison. I've stated what the perspective is, and I've said the methodology. And that's really important. I suggest you pause the video now to perhaps go over the two sources again and make sure every annotation you've got has that comparative feature, has what the perspective is, and has the method attached to it as well. So let's actually have a look at how we would put together an answer for this. This is um, not a complete answer. This, I would argue, is your first two paragraphs, and I suggest you need to do at least four paragraphs in total, ideally six, which is three comparisons in total. So have a look at the success criteria. Explains what the writer's perspective is, explains the tone, uses an embedded quotation, explain the quotation, the method, and making a comparative statement as well. What I would like you to do for me, please, you can either colour code, as I'm asking you to do here, or if you want to, you can number where each of these things has taken place. But have a go reading through this model example and colour coding it together. Pause the video now and have a go at that. So hopefully your answer will look something a bit like this. And it's really important if you want to um, make some annotations just as I'm talking through the deconstruction of an answer, because this is quite a simple structure that you can follow. So you begin in source A, the writer writes subjectively, just to use that keyword, that gangs are a terrible influence. You must start, start with source A and tell me what is their perspective, because that's what they're really asking you to do. Indeed, a sense of corruption permeates the extract. So we've used the word permeate previously in question uh, paper one, question two, and paper two, question three. And it's another thing to be able to do there in terms of the tone that is seen throughout this. Firstly, the writer states that there are a young ruffian, there are young ruffians who infest the neighborhood. I have embedded a quotation. So you've got your point. You said the tone, here is your evidence, and this is our analysis, implying that they have um, taken over it without asking permission. But crucially, I've then identified the method. You must make sure you identify the method with your quotation to be able to talk through that. And as you'll notice, I've simply put the analysis that I did in my annotations on the previous slide. Then it comes to that comparative statement. On the other hand, you must make sure if you're asking for differences, you must do it on the other hand. Disdain towards gangs is not seen in source B, whose author argues that the influence is instead much more insidious. In contrast to source A, a sense of regret permeates the source. So in a similar way, your paragraph is similar because you've got your point and similarly, you've got your point there. And they both start by giving what the tone is in that. Then you've got, the writer describes how the power of gang seems to merge with the community. Again, point, evidence, and here's the analysis, implying that you almost cannot separate the two. The verb merge, merge and uh, suggest that, ga uh, that, gangs, uh, that gangs power may not be immediately obvious. However, over time, it will grow greatly like a parasite. So again, I've taken the keyword and I've put it together in this idea. But the crucial thing, unlike in my first paragraph, I've made that comparative statement. This is different to source A, who seems to be arguing that gang culture is immediately clear and shocking through violent actions affecting everyone in London's streets. So this is your first two paragraphs, source A, 
source B with the comparison. And as I say, you should probably make sure you can do at least two more of this for that comparison, because this is the long mark question for the reading section. So just to finish off, we've done a comparison there. And what I would like you to do now is I would like you to have a go using the sentence starters here at putting together your own comparison based on the uh, ideas of gangs. Remember, you have 16 minutes for this question. So we've probably taken up quite a few of those minutes looking at our first, uh, doing our first paragraph writing and also the analysis is coming with it as well. So I suggest give yourself at least 10 minutes now to be able to have a go at writing up this, uh, this part of it here to make sure you've got all of these ideas coming through. Or each of these is hitting each part of the success criteria because we're having the point, we're saying what the perspective is, we have our comparisons and we are doing our language analysis with that as well. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, please do have a go with that. Do make notes in it. Do pass on uh, any work that you've done to your teacher via show my homework or email if you have it. And it also lets us know any questions if you have them as well. Best of luck with your work, but I hope you found that useful.